Hey guys, Muffin Game Bad today bringing you a video for our tactical weapon series for our tactical LMGs part two. We covered part one in yesterday's video. I'll go ahead and link that down below. This is gonna be part two of our tactical LMGs or light machine guns here in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, as well as one here from the Cold War integration that we'll be covering. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And first off here, we're going to start with the PKP Pechenag. So for this one, let me go ahead and strip this down to the base. Now, this is actually a really nice conversion, probably one of my favorite conversions uh, in the game. So we're going to start with the the PKM is the machine gun at base that you want here. And I'll be utilizing the standard issue blueprint for this, which uh, was also, I'll go ahead and link that video how to unlock this if you don't have it down below. This gives us a heavily Zeneco style PKM for this blueprint, which looks really, really amazing. So. We're gonna go ahead and use that one. And you can see we have the Picatinny rail on it versus this. So we'll go ahead and back out. Here's our standard issue blueprint. Uh, very Hennig Zeneco inspired here. We're gonna go ahead for the muzzle. We're gonna go ahead and want the tactical suppressor. That'll give us a sound suppression. The cons being the aim down sight speed and the aim walking steadiness. For the barrel here, we're gonna go for the conversion option. You have obviously the short barrel for the PKM. You also have the longest barrel for the PKM. But we're going to want the 25.9 inch heavy. Now this is going to give us the PKP Pechenag uh, style barrel with that carrying handle in the front there. So the pros here, damage at range with the bullet velocity and the cons being the aim down sight speed. So that's a really nice conversion here. And again, the pros and cons compared to the longest barrel available in slot are you just don't get the recoil control. However, your mobility and ergo, the ADS and everything is very, very fast with the 25.9. So personally, I prefer it much more than the extended barrel, uh, unless you're specifically looking to just use this for a very long range support fire. So we'll go ahead and use a 25.9. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and want that attack laser. That'll give us the ADS speed, aiming stability, the aim walking steadiness. The cons here being the laser will be visible to enemies when we ADS. And then for the optic, because we are using a Russian LMG here, we're gonna want the VLK three times. So this will give us that three times optic. Cons mean the ADS speed, however, uh, by now everybody should know that this optic is, is very bugged. The best optic in the game, for the most part, gives you more recoil control, gives you an ADS speed increase versus a decrease. Uh, overall, just a very good optic. And because we're using a Russian LMG here with the Petchet Egg, we can go ahead and use the VLK. So we'll select that. For the stock, we're going to leave the base stock because with the blueprint we have the Zeneco style butt stock here. We'll skip out on the perk as well as the rear grip and the ammo. And for the underbarrel here, we're going to want the snatch foregrip. So we'll go ahead and put this on. This will give us the recoil control as well as an ADS speed increase. The con here being the movement speed overall. But you can see that that's going to be equipped with that B33 PK handguard there on the bottom. Very nice looking attachment. We'll go ahead and select that. And this is our PKP Pechenek. Now for the camouflage on this, I typically like to go with some Russian style uh, camouflage here. So for the Woodland, I personally like Desert Hybrid and or Kill Brush are two very good options for this. We'll go with Desert Hybrid for this one. And this is our final design for our PKP Pechenek. Again, this was put in service in 2001. The PKP Pechenag, as well as the PKM, is developed by Mikhail Kalashnikov and Kalashnikov Concern. Obviously, not just Mikhail Kalashnikov, but a team of designers basically uh, made this to replace the RPD. So that's our PKP Pechenag. And you can see it just looks really nice with that standard issue. We have the Zeneco style of buttstock, Picatinny rail on the top, as well as the B33 handguard, sport handguard, which we get here for the Snatch RK2 Hizenico style grip there, which is the angled foregrip you see there as well. So really awesome looking uh, weapon here. We'll go ahead and back out and we'll go to our next LMG. And this is gonna be the RPK. So the RPK was put in service in 1960 and ultimately it was replaced by the PKM. But here what we'll do is we'll go ahead and strip this thing down to base. So we'll start with a base AK. Here I'm using the let's see which blueprint i'm using for this i'm using one of the uh i think the warsaw blueprint is what i'm using so we'll use the warsaw blueprint however if you really wanted to get uh old school with it you could use the base ak but for this one we're going to go ahead and for the barrel we're going to do the 23 inch rpk barrel 
So you can see we have a few options here. We'll go ahead and select the RPK barrel. That's going to give us the damage at range, bullet velocity, and the recoil control. The cons being the aim down sight speed and the movement speed. I prefer this one over the Romanian just because you get a little bit more uh, movement speed increase, I feel. And honestly, the recoil control with a, with a foregrip specifically on there versus the built-in one seems to be a little bit better. So we'll select that. Laser, we'll go with the tack laser for the same pros and cons we discussed previously. Then for the optic here, I'm actually going to do a Leopold hammer. You could obviously, you could definitely go with the VLK. It would be more Russian S, but I'm trying to give it kind of a more modernish uh, type optic on this. So we'll go ahead and do the Leopold hammer. Give us that 3.25 with a top mounted delta. The con here is the ADS speed, but we made up for that with the tack laser. Skip out on the buttstock as well as the perk. And the rear grip, so for the ammunition, we're gonna want the 75 round drum mag of the 762 by 39, so that'll increase our ammo capacity from 30 up to 75. Cons being the ADS speed and the movement speed. And then for the underbarrel attachment here, we'll go ahead and do a Ranger foregrip that'll give us the recoil control, the aim and stability, cons being the aim walking movement speed and the aim down sight speed. And you can see it gives us, because of the blueprint or because of the weapon itself, it gives us a nice black handguard overall there so we don't have that ugly uh, old rustic wood so it actually looks pretty modern-esque for an rpd so we'll go ahead and select or excuse me an rpk so we'll go ahead and select that this is our final variant of the rpk uh later replaced really by the rpk 74 which would fire the 545 by 45 millimeter and ultimately this type of machine gun was replaced by the pkm so this is the rpk machine gun another russian machine gun we'll go ahead and back out and we'll cover the m60 so the m60 put in service or the design period ended and was put in service in 1957 uh designed by sacco i believe it was sacco uh industries i want to say it was something along those lines is now developed by u.s ordinance but i think sacco industries or sacco defense are the ones that developed this one originally the original version we see here from the cold war underground so this is really the only one from the cold war list here we're going to be using the rambo classic blueprint here and i covered that the other day in a video for the bundle it's a nice looking blueprint just because we get the belt wrapped around the handguard just like rambo so it looks really cool so for the barrel option here we're going to go with the 22 inch match grade which is uh specific to the blueprint itself this will give us the effective damage range in the sprint to fire speed you could also really probably ideally you might want to go with the task force but the recoil is going to be a lot with that so you want to, the recoil in this is really just pretty hard to control overall. So the 22.8 inch match grade seems to be the best in slot. And then we're actually going to want to replace it with the default option here because we want that bipod mounted there on the underbarrel to give it that M60, classic M60 look. So we'll select that. And then for the laser, we'll go ahead and skip. For the optic, I'm going to go ahead and put a Elcan on there. So that's a two times vision tech. Stock option, we can leave blank. For the rear grip, we'll go ahead and do the airborne elastic wrap. That'll give us the ADS speed increase, flinch resistance, aim and stability, with the con being the ADS firing movement speed, firing movement speed, and sprint to fire time. And then for the ammunition, we'll go ahead for the blueprint. We'll put on that 120 round magazine there, or the box magazine with a belt, 120 rounds. The pros being the ammo capacity increase from 100 to 120, and the cons being the reload quickness so we'll go ahead and select that and then for the underbarrel option again another specific one here to the blueprint we'll go ahead with the field agent grip you can see there the grip itself is bolted on to the handguard which actually makes sense that'll give us horizontal recoil control as well as vertical and the cons here being the firing movement speed and the ads speed so we'll go ahead and select that and this is our m60 lmg i'd really like to see it m60 e6 by u.s ordinance put in the game uh, too bad we didn't get that. Hopefully in Modern Warfare 2, I'm sure Battlefield 6 will probably have a U.S. Ordnance M60E6. M60's been a classic in Battlefield, but yeah, the M60 here, again, designed in 1957, saw all, the, all its service in the Vietnam War, uh, later replaced by different iterations of the M60. We had the M60, I believe, the E3, and then eventually the E4, as, again, it was phased out of service before that point, and replaced by the M240 Bravo. However, recently, this was readopted into other militaries. I believe it was the Danish military adopted this as the M60E6 by U.S. Ordnance. So, very interesting weapon. 
Definitely all time one of my favorite weapons here is the M60. I've loved this weapon in every single game ever that it's been in. So great weapon, a lot of fun to play with. Just really gotta be conscious of controlling the recoil, the horizontal specifically here in the game. So next up is the L86. So the L86, again, this one is a late Enfield, the SA80 series, put in service in 1985. And here we go, we'll go ahead and strip this thing down to base. We're gonna go with the for the barrel option, the 25.4 inch factory is the one that came equipped with the LMG variant for the L86. That'll give us a damage range, bullet velocity, and the recoil control, the cons being the aim down sight speed, and the movement speed. We'll select that. We'll also go ahead and put on a tack laser there. And for the optic, I'm trying to go with, we'll go with the hybrid again, the out, the uh, Leopold hammer, just because I'm trying to go with uh, what you see a lot of the L SA80 series and the la 85s uh mounted with like l cans with the top mounted red dot so that's really as close as we're going to get here is that 3.25 of the top mounted red dot for the leopold hammer so we'll select that stock will actually leave blank however i really do like the aesthetics of the ultralight hollow i think that one looks very clean we'll go ahead and skip the perk and then for the rear grip we'll go ahead and put on the rubberized grip tape for the additional recoil control cons here being aim and stability which we're making up with with the tack laser and then ammunition will leave this blank however you do have a 50 and even a 60 round option for this weapon and then the under barrel we're going to go obviously because the lmg we're going to go with the bipod and this one is a nice bipod specific to the l86 so crouch prone recoil control we'll select that and this is our sa80 series l86 lmg this was basically the squad automatic weapon variant of the SA-80 series of weapons. Very nice looking weapon. I wish they just made it a little bit more cleaner looking. You can tell this weapon is very old and rustic and beat up. All the furnish, the furnish on the weapon, the handguard, pistol grip, butt stock is all just very old, you can tell. Um, I wish they gave us the SA-80 series uh, A2 or even the A3 would have been a better option here in game. So it still looks really nice regardless very reminiscent of modern warfare 2 so that's our l86 and last but not least we're going to go down memory lane here so this is another modern warfare one this is the mg34 so the mg34 put in service in 1934 saw all of its service throughout world war 2 we'll go ahead and strip this thing down we're going to go with attack laser here just to give us a little bit additional benefits we're going to go with the base optic because world war 2 we didn't really have any optics that were available with this we'll use the iron sights or the leaf sights on this, and then we'll leave the base stock, skip the perk. For the grip, we're gonna go with the rubberized grip tape for the recoil control and the cons being the aiming stability. The ammunition, we're gonna bump that up to a 100 round belt. So we'll increase, I believe it's from a base of 50. So we're increasing by 50. And the cons here being the aim down sight speed and the movement speed, aim down sight speed, we're making up with that tack laser though. So we'll select that. And you also have some blueprint options here as well if you wanted that look pretty nice on this weapon and then for the under barrel we're going to go obviously with the bipod since there's no optic mounts that were available on this back then so we'll go with the bipod there for the crouch and prone recoil control and this is trying to stay true to of the time our mg34 so this is the mg34 very expensive to cr produce this but one of the best probably the best machine gun of its era Obviously, because it was so expensive to produce and timely to produce, it was replaced by the cheaper and easier to manufacture MG42. However, this was the better machine gun overall. Slightly lower rate of fire, but this was more reliable and more, uh, I would say, widely accepted by the German troops during the war. This is the one they preferred over the MG42. It had less problems and, again, a lot more timely to produce and cost it, which is why it was eventually kind of... Uh, they tried to replace it with the MG42, but they realized that they really couldn't. The MG34 still needed a role in the war. Very nice looking machine gun. That is all of our tactical LMGs here for our series of this part two of the tactical weapon series. We covered the PKP Pechenegg. I really wish we had a Pechenegg bullpup option here in the game. If we were to just select the uh, no stock option, there should be a bullpup, a bullpup option here and it would convert this to the bullpup Pechenegg would be awesome. But unfortunately, they didn't go that route with this game, hopefully with Modern Warfare 2. We have the RPK machine gun from 1960. We have the M60 from 1957. 
We have the LED6 from 1985 and the MG34 from 1934. So let me know what you guys think down below. Which one's your favorite machine gun in the game? Let me know if I missed anything, any conversions like that. I think we covered everything here, especially with part one yesterday. You can see the weapons we did here in part two today. So let me know down below. Till next time, this is Buckner Gaming with our tactical weapon series for our tactical LMGs. Till next time, Buckner Gaming. Out.